Hi everyone, I'm here with David Wright again. Uh, David is a personal trainer at uh, Fitness for 10 in Carson City. Go say hi if you're in Carson City. Probably not in Carson City, but if you are, go say hi to him. He's in our studio there at the gym. Thanks for being here, David. Thanks for having me, Steve. All right, so we're going to talk about, okay, work, family, and prioritizing your fitness or your health. This is a big deal, especially as Americans. We get caught up with so many things and get distracted by so many things and our priorities get all over the place. But your health and, you know, when you brought up this topic, it was interesting because you said family, too. There's so much that goes into this. How many families sit down and have a family meal, a home cooked family meal these days? Yeah, I mean, I know that there's a lot that that don't, you know, due to all sorts of different you know, reasons and everything. So it's pretty rare, I think, these days for a lot of people. I do. I think so also. Um, so um, let's talk about how do we balance this? Because we have busy lives, people are working and you, you know, you need to spend time with your family, but the exercise and your diet is not only important for you, it's important to prioritize it for your family. So what are your thoughts on how this can be accomplished? I know you have a family, so, um, and, you know, your health is obviously very important to you. So I'm assuming it's important to your family, but you put a lot of time and you know, also your work is about being healthy too. So how do you juggle this? Yeah. So it's been an important part of my life for a while, you know, trying to get healthy. You know, we did a segment about, you know, the weight I lost and, and that kind of thing. And, you know, that I'm a fitness competitor. So, you know, health is extremely important to me and, you know, year round, not just during competition. So when I first started kind of learning a little bit here and there about eating healthier, cooking at home and, and the types of things, you know, my kids and I would eat, you know, the same meal. I'd make what I make for me. They would eat the same thing. Um, now they're older. So, you know, they make uh, their own kind of choices, but they have kind of the foundation of, you know, what's healthy and what's eaten. They all do pretty well in that respect. Not, not the best everywhere, but one of the things for me was trying to figure out, you know, um, prior to, you know, working here at Fitness for 10 as a, as a personal trainer, you know, I had a, you know, eight to five or sometimes, you know, longer than that office type job. So, you know, there was, there was a lot of times where I was not at home, you know, like a everyday family, you know, you get home from work, pick the kids up from daycare, school, you know, wherever you pick them up from, you know, you have all these things, sports, different things going on. So everybody has a lot of stuff that's happening. And my particular, you know, family, as an example, you know, my kids used to be in youth football and cheer. So, you know, I'd get off, we'd go to football, we'd do all these things. And it's like, when, when do I have time to, to go to the gym or, you know, to do any kind of exercise, whether it's in a gym or not. Um, and one of the things that I found for me, because I had three kids as well. Um, and as a single parent, uh, you know, for most of that time, it was like, how do I, how in the world do I fit this in? Um, but I really had to prioritize the fact that number one, for me, I didn't want to kind of slide backwards to go back up to 260 pounds. So number one, I had to figure out, well, how do I need to eat? That's where the nutrition part came in. Like, how do I cook? What do I eat? You know, and would it be much harder to make something different for me than for my kids? Of course it would, because you're making a couple meals. So I kind of figured out, well, let's try to eat the same things as much as we can. Started there and then said, okay, you know, how do we, um, how do I fit the gym in? Because I wanted to go to the gym and start lifting weights and learn about all that. So then it was, well, I can go at this specific time because, you know, kids are at school and it's before I go to the office or, you know, if there's a, a babysitter situation or care situation where you can go after work or whatever, during lunchtime, whatever that case might be, like fit that time in, start fitting time in somewhere. And that's what I started doing was fitting that time. in, even if it's on the weekend only, cause that's the only time maybe somebody else can help you out there or whatever the case might be, do that. 
um, you know, make those steps. And that's what I did. And so I think when we have, we have families, family activities, we've got, you know, our work life. And then a lot of times people think, you know, if I go to the gym, I have to be there for two, three hours because you hear about people in the gym for a lot of time. You don't have to do that. So to take kind of that burden off, I just kind of want to throw it out there to everybody that when you come into the gym or you do a, you know, outdoor exercise, whatever kind of exercise you're going to do, you don't have to do it for super long periods of time. As a matter of fact, I tell you, don't do that because <laughs> you'll get burned out really quick, especially if you're first starting. So it's really just setting those goals and saying, well, uh, the, the mindset is I don't have time because I'm busy. A lot of people are very busy with similar things and you have to kind of make time somewhere within your day to kind of start down that road. Yeah, I think this is true for everyone. The priorities that we choose in our life and where we put those priorities, they affect everything else in our life. And the gym, I mean, <clears throat> and, and then you you rate those priorities. How important is exercise? Well, for me, it's way up there. Why? Because that's going to affect your family life, your work life. It's going to affect you making money. It's going to affect everything. Being healthy and fit. If you're not, all your other priorities are kind of out the door. So I think the first thing is what are your priorities? And, you know, categorize them and how much time you want to put into those priorities and then kind of build it in. And most people don't do this. They just wing life, you know, but if you do, um, you know, write this down, organize it. And if you're going to go to a gym, it's so important to me. And I think to people who are going to stick with their regiment is the gym convenient. It has to be convenient Pay a few extra bucks if something is more convenient because you're going to get your money's worth uh, for that conveniency. And build, now build it into your life. Maybe you're going to uh, work out, you know, before you go to work. And now you can take a shower. You know, you take your little bag. You can take a shower at the gym. And so you're consolidating things that you have to do in the morning. That's just one way to do it. Take a shower at the gym and now you're off to work. The gym is really close to work and you saved a lot of time, but you made the exercise a priority. And then there's how do you eat? How does your family eat? And, you know, this is a tough one because it mm -hmm. takes time and effort, especially these days, to eat healthy. It, it just takes time and effort to cook things, to make things at home. And that's a lot of time. It's so tempting and it's so easy just to, I'm grabbing a pizza on the way home. And that's okay once in a while, I guess. But that's not something you want to do every day. Or, hey, I'm grabbing something from the fast food or the deli or whatever. Um, and that's going to be dinner. Um you know, you've, you've got to address that and at least eat some healthy meals um, yourself with your family or whoever you're feeding at least, you know, a few times a week, you know. And so what you put in your mouth is a big deal along with exercise, right? Oh, absolutely. And that's one of the things when you bring up priorities, Steve, it's great because, you know, you look at those priorities and, and I look at things now, you know, I've been doing, you know, weightlifting, you know, I've been in several different shows prepping for one now, but when I look at priorities too, I also look at down the road to your point, you know, you want to have yourself to be healthy. And so you can do all the things you want to do. I have clients who are like, you know, I want to play more with my small children or be able to go on this hikes with my family or, you know, these different things. And, and people don't realize really what, what, you know, fitness and, and making that a priority is. It's not that you're going to come in and, you know, become Arnold Schwarzenegger tomorrow when you're in the gym. And that's not everybody's goal. As a matter of fact, that's very few people's goal, you know, to be that size. A lot of people come in and they just want to be healthier. They want to be a little bit stronger, the, a bunch of different things. But what's the other thing they don't think of a lot is, down the road, you know, we want to travel, we want to do all these other things. Well, your health is going to be extremely important 
down the road, not just tomorrow, but next year, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, you know, the more that you're working every day at, at bettering yourself health wise, you know, that's going to carry your longevity a lot more. You're going to be able to be uh, mobile, you know, a lot more for longer periods of life. So it really makes your, your uh, quality of life a lot better. And people don't realize that they're looking a lot of times at this short term. And I look and go, yeah, absolutely. You know, you want to see certain goals and we'll set those short term goals and longer term, but look at 20 years from now, like if you don't really make some sort of fitness and health a priority, that doesn't mean you're in the gym five days a week, but, you know, prioritize that for yourself, you know, down the road, you're going to have possibly more, you know, complications from medical conditions and, and other, other things that happen, joints and tendons and all the things that we don't like to talk about as we age, those things happen. And, and the more that you prioritize your health now, you know, the more you're not going to have to worry as much about those things later and you can enjoy life. So it's, it's those results down the road, too, that I like to really stress to people, even if they're in their 30s. OK, well, you don't think at all about that in your 30s. Great. But you will when you get there. So let's start now and just kind of continuously keep you healthy. And, and you know, your food's a big part of it right now with me, you know. Uh, prepping for a show. I eat completely different meals. Matter of fact, I had a family reunion yesterday. Everybody was having you know, tacos and all these great things. I had my little, my little meal plan that's from my coach. And so even if you know, you have different goals and you're still maybe sitting down with your family a couple days a week, if you can, which I loved doing that um, with my kids when we could do that and have the time and everything, even if you maybe are eating something a little bit different for your goal, but you're still feeding your family, you know, a, a nu nutritious meal and stuff like that, that's fine. It's also about spending the time with those folks in your life that, that you care about and, and making that also a priority. Because if you want to do that for longer, you're teaching them at that point, like, hey, you can eat healthy, you know, enjoy this. But also you're prolonging most likely your life and your quality while you're there because you're, you're making that a priority for yourself. So it's really, really important. Yeah. And, you know, you're... Um, an interesting and a good example because you guys can look at David right now. You can kind of see his shoulders and we'll, at the end, we'll tell you how to get him on social media, but he just looks like a normal guy. Well, he doesn't look like a normal guy. If you go to his social media channels, he does not look like a normal guy right now because he's got a contest, you know, I don't know, a month or so, month and a half out. So that makes a difference. But um, here's how, kind of how I would kind of relate to what you're talking about. This is an investment and absolutely an yeah. easy way to become a millionaire is start saving and investing when you're 20, start doing it, make it a top priority. You take a hundred bucks a month, 200 bucks a month, which is a lot. And you invest it. You get good guidance, um, good counsel on how to invest your money. You're going to be a millionaire at a fairly young age. It, but people don't do that. My, my daughter's a big saver. My son is not. He's, you know, lives day by day and that's okay. That's his choice. But your health and your, and your level of fitness is an investment. So, um, and it, it makes a difference. And when you compare it financially, look, if you're, if you're going day by day and you're just eating what is satisfying you now and whatever's fast and you're not focusing on this, oh no, now your car just broke down. Oh, I don't have the money to fix my car right? That happens or mm -hmm. something broke or, or you, and you don't have a cash reserve to address the issue that came up. And those are the people that don't save. And now they're in trouble. Now they're in debt. And there is just spiraling down, down, down. Look at your health that way. If you can save a hundred, 200 bucks a month, invest it wisely starting as a teenager you will end up being a millionaire i mean that's the odds you know 90 percent chance you will be a multi-millionaire if you do that 
but people don't do that with their food. They don't do that with their exercise. And I just think it's a really good analogy. And that's why, I don't know. I don't know if our culture is lazy or, or what we don't plan for the future. We don't think about the future. And then later we wish we did, right? Oh yeah. Yep. I hear that a lot. I wish I had started this a lot earlier. Right. Start saving now in case your car breaks down. All right. So David, if people want to see your progress and what you're doing on social media, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, so uh, social media, I can be found on Instagram at David Wright underscore fitness. That's my show progress, you know, different uh, transitions and what I've kind of where I came from, where I'm at now. And then also uh, at Wright Fitness Training on Instagram for personal training tips and things like that. Um, both great pages to check out. All right, David, thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Steve.